Hey, what's up guys, David Johnson here, and we're gonna be taking you through the process of removing items in Photoshop from these two images here, show you the easiest way possible so that you can do it with your own photography as well. This is the easiest way possible. Let's get to it. All right guys, so what we're gonna do is take you into the computer screen and really show you exactly how to go through all the processes of doing this. Like I said before, it's really, really easy, but I want to be sure you guys know exactly how to do it so that you can do it with your own photography as well and really make these beneficial changes because sometimes you get that image back onto your computer screen. Maybe you didn't notice something was going on in a photograph that you wanna remove or maybe in real time when you're in the field, you see something in the image that's not quite right that you wanna remove and you're kinda of just like, ugh, get that out of there. So we're gonna be taking you onto the computer screen right now showing you exactly how to do this in Photoshop. All right guys, now that we're over in Photoshop, we can look at these two images that we're gonna be editing today using the clone stamp tool, which is what the tool you use that you actually remove objects from your photograph essentially. What you're doing when you're using this tool is cloning one part of a photograph and cloning it and, and putting it over the different part of the photograph that you actually want to eliminate from the image. So this isn't like some scientific thing like we talk about cloning or you know use DNA or whatever the heck they're doing over there. Uh, what we're doing is cloning out different pixels and removing them to put them over a different part of the photograph. So the first image that I wanna work with is this drone aerial photograph using the DJI Mavic Pro, which the link to that is below in the comments section. Uh, but we're going to be cloning out parts of this aerial image to remove these three goats that are right here in the middle of the photograph. Now, what you want to do when you start using the clone stamp tool is notice that it opens up this tool that is circular. You can see it over here on the left side of my screen. And when you want to adjust that size, you can either A, use the left and right bracket keys and just punch those keys up and down we go, or you can actually use this drop down menu right here, which can adjust the size of your brush and also the hardness of the edge of your brush. Now, the hardness of the edge of the brush determines how much detail is put on the edge of the cloning that you're actually doing. So to put it in basic terms, the harder that you make the brush, say like 97 to 100%, usually like 75 to 100 is gonna be a pretty hard edge, that is going to uh, not like fade out that edge and make it like a soft transition. This is gonna be a pretty hard transition of the cloning, but when you reduce it down to say like 25% to 0%, that's gonna be a pretty soft edge, and I'll show you the different situations to use those in. For this situation, since we have a lot of textures and lighting variation going on in the image, I want to use a pretty hard edge for this just because if you use a softer edge, what you're going to find is it kind of muddles up the details that are going on around these goats that we're trying to clone stamp out. So when you want to start using the clone stamper, you just hold down your alt or option key and you'll notice there's this little bullseye that comes up. That bullseye indicates the bullseye of where you want the cloning to commence. I feel really cool using all these scientific terms. So you hold down the alter option key and then you click within the image. And if you'll notice that image that you clicked on kind of hovers around as you move your mouse. So what we want to clone out are these goats right here and we can just click and start painting in that cloned area uh, that we made over here. This last goat, I'm gonna paint in some of this lighter area right here. It kind of looks like a good way to kind of adjust things with the light that we have going on. And there you go, the goats are totally gone. We have replaced them with the cloned areas that we took from different parts of the photographs and move those pixels over the goats to completely remove them. And as you see, using the hardness of the brush that we did, we don't have those muddled edges on uh, the brush that we use, so you can barely tell, if at all, where we stamped things out. 
So let's look at a different example of the clone stamp tool. And as you can see, it's still cloned from the other image. So what I'm going to do is zoom in on different parts of this photograph and show you how you can use the clone stamp tool maybe with a little bit more difficult of an image task. So like this one, again, a drone image took with my DJI Mavic Pro. We can zoom in on areas where the track is missing that I might want to replace. So I can zoom in on this. And what we're dealing with are a lot of different like linear things that we need to account for. So with the clone stamp, select it right here from the left edge. I can take my brush that's still set to the last one, hold down my Alt or Option key, and do one click, and bring it over here. And what I want to do with like linear things is line everything up exactly, because even if you're a fraction off, people are going to be able to tell exactly where you took that or replace something with the clone stamp tool. And then you just click down. And this, the, the linear parts, you can either use with a hard edge or a softer edge. Like if I reduce the hardness here to like a 12%, you can kind of see as I move the mouse around with the clone stamp tool, it kind of shows you that haziness on the edges. It's going to do the exact same thing since we're dealing with a linear object. So I can just hover over this. But what you want to be aware of, as we didn't have last time with the harder edge, the tracks on the very edges. If I adjust those incorrectly, you're going to get like this weird ghosting of the tracks. You want to be sure that every line matches up exactly. So it's a little bit more difficult to use uh, than the harder edge using the softer edge, uh, but it does the exact same thing as you can see. So, I mean, we can look around in different parts of the photograph and let's say we want to replace this white spot of this track as well. We can come over here to the clone stamp tool on the left side. And let's say I want to take this part of the track, click down and then line up everything. And boom, there it is removed and replaced with the appropriate pixels that we have. Sometimes when you replace things, you're going to go back and notice uh, different features that show up twice like this little T in the railroad track and this one as well. You know, I don't really like that as uh, a photographer. I don't like seeing that because it's too much repetition in something that doesn't have uh, those details repeating too often. So what I can do is use the clone stamp tool again, reduce that size using my left bracket key, hold down my alter option key and I'm just going to clone stamp this bad boy right out of there. So there, now we don't have the similar track pattern going on. Everything looks extremely natural and now we know how to use the clone stamp tool. So if you like this video and you found it educational at all, or you want to see more videos like it, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button at the bottom of this or the subscribe button to get new videos sent right to your email inbox so you can catch up on everything that is going to improve your photography.